we've had on show uh, so far. And it uh, features uh, Bakatir Jalalov, the number one seed and 26 year old who has won just about the lot. In the blue corner, representing Kazakhstan, comes back, come and in his way, a man he knows particularly well. The number two seed, Kumshebek Kunkabayev, who, like Jalilov, has picked up medals aplenty in most formats, both of them with WSB experience, both of them with recent pro experience as well. Back in this court, looking forward to seeing what the... The, the sort of pro experience has, has done to either of them. Um, it's pretty even in terms of their record, Andy, between them, although in recent events, Jalilov definitely holds the upper hand. Absolutely. They met in finals twice in this competition, 2017, 2019, the World Championships in 2019 as well, and Jalilov has, has won all of those. Kunkabayev with a win in WSB, a win in the quarterfinals of the Worlds in 2017, and the in the Stranger tournament a couple of years before that, so they're very familiar with each other. And it's the third time in a row on this night, in this event, uh, that Jalilov and Kunkabayev have faced off against each other. Jalilov has beaten Kunkabayev on both occasions. I've actually called two out of three of, Jalilov, of uh, Kunkabayev's pro contest so far, and I've been really impressed by the way he's been matched and indeed the the way he's fought. So I'm really in interested to see how that experience is, is going to feed into him. You see the size difference uh, immediately. Obviously, Jalilov, the, the taller southpaw in the red. Maybe that uh, size can work against him with Kunkabayev, who uh, certainly carries a, a bit of a, a thwack, sort of both of them. So looking forward to this one. I saw a huge Uzbek Southport super heavyweight of the world youths as well, Jakongi Zokirov. So there must be some kind of formula for growing them back in uh, back in Uzbekistan and, and he looked impressive, just 17 years old. And it's quite simple the way he goes about things, isn't he, Jalilov? He looks for that one two and he lands it with good effect and, and so often his opponent I think feels that He's too far out to land it, but with that reach and that extension he gets it, he somehow gets there. Yeah, he's got pretty good feet also for a big man, I think it's fair to say as well. He's just moving round the centre circle, if you like, and he's just looking, that, watch the, the right hand, he's just kind of waving that distractedly, almost as if he's going to counter the, with a right hook. And it's, he's playing the difficulties that Kunkabaya faces, trying to get inside and underneath and then explode if he can. He's, he's getting there, not easy. He did there with the left hand, Andy, but he only did it because Jalilov missed initially. Both of these two with their feet planted fairly wide. You look at Jalilov there and the space between that lead foot, that, that back foot trying to snap that jab and send the left hand in after it. That's a terrific shot. That was beautiful boxing there from Jalilov. Getting on the front foot, trying to not just intimidate, but ask a question of, of Kunkabayev, get him to lead off himself, and he did that, and then he, he smacked him with a counter shot, and he did it really eye-catchingly. Has that left eye swelled up immediately? Let's take a look at this. Yeah, it might just be, no, it's okay, just a little nick. I thought there was a, a swelling there, but it was a, a huge shot landed by Jalilov there, the, the best of the fight so far. He's just making Kunkabaya fall short, isn't he, every now and again, and then clipping him with that left hand. Well, he's got a count to referee. I, I mean, there was a shot landed there from Jalilov, and then he almost as Kunkabaya sort of crouched down whether it was the effect of the shot or what not quite sure maybe the replays will clear that up but it did look as though then there was a push from uh, Jalilov just to send him over on his way either way Andy 
he was just starting to pick him up. And you can see, yeah, that eye is, it is a bit worse than it first looked on, on inspection. There's a little mark on his chin as well. He's been picked off with a couple of big shots there, Kunkabayev, right towards the end of that round. Ominous signs for him, really, as you say, towards the conclusion of the round. And that little cut may be slightly in the corner of the eye, maybe even on the on the eyelid. That can be very, very uncomfortable. There you can see, make a miss. That's the, the one of the things in, in boxing that uh, is too easy to forget that the first point of it should be making a miss and then the second making them pay. There's much more concentration on defense and we saw quite a bit of it. Did you get to see the uh, the, the stumble, the, the knockdown at the end there? Difficult to see with Jalilov's big frame very much in the way of the camera, but uh, it looked as though it might have been something of a push. It, it did look more like a push. It did look more like a push as we outlined earlier on. The fact that it was, that it was called won't necessarily do any damage there to, to Kunkabayev. That would be extremely bad news in a in a pro ring because that would result in a in a 10-8 round without any question but that's not the way that the scoring is done in Aiva boxing it is a better system in in my view in many ways just dipping in with that front foot there Jalalov that's what he he tries to do doesn't he he tries to draw something from Kunkabayev whoever he's fighting make them fall short and then punish them but when you've got that wide stance when you've got those feet planted wide your front foot can be right on top of your opponent but then you can pull the weight all the way onto the back foot and it provides this illusion that you're you're within range because of where your front foot is but in effect you're actually not well, you can see the the problems that the the size and stature and technique range and the footwork significantly of, of Jalilov the, the problems that it presents for any kind of fighter around this weight and there again for a big guy that the head movement and the foot movement there to to make Kunkabayev miss and Kunkabayev is he's now swiping and lunging into attacks and an element of frustration creeping in and you can understand why he's been hurt in the, the first round and he's been made to miss in the second being made to miss is well it's twofold isn't it really it's it's slightly demoralizing of course but also it's, it's physically draining punching thin air any fighter will, will tell you that that the missing can can really run that that battery down still trying though and there that that sort of long left hand he gets fired from a from, from below the waist up and round he seemed to travel a long way he did manage to make it connect though Kunkabaya but it's a, a rare little bit of success it's great credit to him that he is giving it absolutely everything and, and well he should and, and might a little bit more success tiny bit of success glimmer of hope maybe for Kunkabayev at the end of the round well he's hanging in there isn't he just sucking the air in between rounds there you see that little bit of damage on the on the left eye that'll be very sore a bit of marking up around the, the chin and just by that left nostril too whereas on the other hand Jalilov is is fresh He's a very, very difficult man to to box against because he he just does the basics very well, doesn't he? And he's got that sheer physical size, which if you've got that at super heavyweight, of course, it's a, it's an advantage. Kukabayev isn't a particularly big super heavyweight, certainly not by comparison to to Jalilov. And he really had to step in and almost reach with that to get it there really commit to it into the third and final round final round of the night and what's been a 
A terrific night's entertainment and boxing. Hopefully you've enjoyed so far. Three more minutes to go. Can Kunkabayev unsettle Jalilov? Can he get close to let his hands go? Warning for Jalilov for about punching around the back of the head in the in the clinch. Again, there he's making Kunkabayev miss with the left hand. Just constant tilt of the, the shoulders one way or t'other. Just slight movement of the head from Jalilov. All the while the, the feet are circling too as he lets hand, the left hand go. really stepped into that left hand too maybe the balance just deserted him a bit so he he followed it onto the shoulder but it just gives you an idea because we were kind of side onto that of just how how far out he can be and still look for that left hand tell you what he walked onto a very short left though from Kunkabayev that those are the moments if he misses these are the, the times when he might just be vulnerable Kunkabayev still trying to find a way. Maybe the, the pace is dropping. You know, I think it's, it's fair to say the big guys, particularly Jalilov, and maybe just slowing down a little. Another left hand getting in there from Kunkabayev. He's got that punch off slightly better in this final round. Things have improved for him, really, since that opening round. That was a bit of a, a damaging one for him, that first three minutes. And... I think I said at the end of that round that there were ominous signs, but he's shown his grit since then and no little skill to, to lessen that gap between these two. Yeah, Jalilov's been quieter, hasn't he? In the last sort of three, four minutes or so. Couldn't quite time Kunkabayev that, that time around. Lead right hand there, though, from Jalilov. And as you said, the pace has dropped towards the end of the third and final round. Kunkabai have just caught by the left hand again there as he careered forward, somewhat out of control. Well, Jalilov looked like he, he might be in total control after the first round. And the gap between them closed literally in every way through the, the second and the, and the third. Jalilov was a little bit quieter. He's confident there, though, isn't he? I, th I think maybe towards the end of that round, he didn't really feel the need to put his foot to the floor because he, he, he felt that he had the, the fight won. That, I mean, that's always pretty dangerous, isn't it, if that was the case? But uh, he didn't show that much urgency towards the end of the round there, Jalilov, when he did look like he might have a bit left in the tank. Only one silver medal. Otherwise, it's been gold tonight for... The Uzbek team, are they going to grab another one or is Kazakhstan going to get on the board? Gentlemen, the winner by unanimous decision in the red corner representing Uzbekistan. Jalilov it is who does it again. And having won it in 2017, beating Kunkabayev. 2019, beating Kunkabayev. 2021. He wins it again, beating Kunkabayev, who must be sick of the sight of Bakadir Jalilov, who makes it six out of seven on the night for Uzbekistan. Well, very strong showing from them, as, as we expected. Really, it's not quite enough to catch up with Kazakhstan, who won eight gold medals yesterday in the women's. Uzbekistan took one as well, so that sees them finish and the overall medals table on, on seven gold. So those two powerhouses right up at the top of the, the medals table, one dominating the women's section, the other dominating the men's. Uzbekistan in the last three Asian championships have led the way in the men's half of the competition. Good day for Mongolia as well. Three wins for them. And that gold medal for 
for India too. And we've seen some fantastic fights out of those 10 finals, seven of them going to a split decision, which as we've been saying on the way through tells you it's its own story. You always know that the standard is going to be extremely high in these continental championships and that has proven to be the case from what we've seen over the whole of the last week, but particularly the last couple of days. And here we see some of the, the action from that contest. Definitely, it was defense and then counter attack in the, the first round particularly. It was so classy and so eye catching from Jalilov. Despite his better efforts, Kukabayev couldn't quite land as many shots as he wanted to. A few more in the second and third rounds. He gave it absolutely everything. And really, for much of that, they almost looked like two fighters in, in different weight classes, really. And there you, you see it. Another one for him, and another one for Uzbekistan. Well, he's on quite a quite a 